Anyone else remember the Star Wars quote, I feel a great disturbance in the Force? <laughs> it's how I feel when observing and then mulling over what's happening to Huawei at the moment. First, we had a deep-seated suspicion of Huawei's infrastructure equipment by the USA government. A little paranoid, but OK, if you're going to be passing around top-secret data among the official authorities, then you don't want to have to worry about backdoors in routers. Then it got a bit weird with the USA ban not just covering Huawei network equipment, but also Huawei smartphones. So none of these in the USA then. But then Mr Trump and his paranoid cronies went a step further, adding Huawei as a company to its banned entities list, meaning that no US company was allowed to do business with Huawei at all. In practice, some companies have found a way around this, for example, on the hardware side by passing components through third party companies in other countries before assembly into Huawei phones. But this can't apply to software, which is worldwide. And this is where it all gets, well, more interesting and also scary. You see, obviously, Huawei makes smartphones based on Android. Yes, there's what it calls EMUI, Emotion UI, a replacement launcher with plenty of its own replacement applications too. Yet even with all of this, there's a massive, huge Google folder with Gmail, Google Maps, YouTube, Google Drive, Play Music, Google Photos, and of course the Play Store, and under the hood, Google Play Services. Now, Google is a company which is bound by US law, which means that it can't license its OS and services to Huawei at least for new products that haven't already been certified. This is partly why we've seen Huawei launch the new P30 Pro at IFA 2019, the exact same P30 Pro as before, but with Android 10 out of the box and a new colour scheme. Essentially, this is about all it could release in terms of new hardware and get around the rules, since new Google certified Android phones might be now out of the question, which is very sad indeed. Huawei is pressing ahead with the launch next week, of the Mate 30 series, including a top-end Mate 30 Pro with reportedly twin 40 megapixel sensors and maybe Xenon Flash. Wow, you can understand me getting a bit excited about that. However, as I read things and in intuiting the, the crisis management happening inside Huawei at the moment, the Mate 30 Pro will ship with Huawei's own recompile of Android open source project, i.e. Android, but without any of Google's proprietary applications or services. Now, Huawei have been said to be working on their own versions of Maps, plus they have their own gallery, cloud storage and media applications and services, of course. So it's not as if the Mate 30 Pro and other future devices will be left without functionality. And no doubt there will be a Huawei first party Android store on the device with digitally signed and checked applications in a hopefully suitable number. But come on, the whole point the whole point of buying an Android phone for certainly people in the West is access to all the Google goodness that has made our lives so much easier over the last decade. Email that never needs managing or deleting. Photos that live in the cloud and can be searched in microseconds from anywhere on the planet. Your entire music collection for streaming on any signed in device and so on. Plus access to several million applications in the Play Store, all of which are already signed and checked by Google in theory. However tempting the imaging hardware and the likes of the Mate 30 Pro, however tempting the functionality of the folding Mate X, if they don't actually have all of the Google stuff I like, then these new Huawei phones are almost feature phones by comparison, I'd argue. Now, with my geek hat on, I do have a hunch that if all this does happen and pan out, then there will be an official or more likely unofficial wizard utility on a neutral site that walks a user through retrofitting the Google apps and services, hopefully in a one tap and reboot fashion. With this utility not being seen to be part of the Huawei out of the box experience, maybe this will get around the entity restrictions. It's a bit of a lottery. We'll find out at the end of next week. Anyway, food for thought.